Hello, welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Isaiah 39 and Revelation chapter 5. Now, Isaiah 39, Hezekiah has recovered from his sickness and the king of Babylon is intrigued by this. So he sends an envoy just to make sure that his enemy is alive and he sends him some gifts. So Hezekiah, being the nice guy that he is, shows him his armory, shows him his treasury, sends the envoy home. Isaiah pops up and says, what have you done? What have you shown them? He said, I've shown them everything. I didn't spare any. I showed them everything that we have. Isaiah uses the moment to give a prophecy. And he says, you know what? There's not going to be one thing left of your armory, of your treasury. These Babylonians are going to carry them off. But listen, it's not going to happen in your lifetime. Because you've been following God. It's going to happen in the lifetime of your kids. Now, this is what Hezekiah says. This is one of the most tragic sentences in the whole Old Testament. Hezekiah replied, Huh, that's good, he thought. There will be peace and security in my lifetime. As long as things are going well in his lifetime, he couldn't give a continental about his successes, his grandkids, his great-grandkids. Isn't that a tragedy? All of us, I think, should be living not only for the now, not only for what God's doing now, but for those who would follow, our spiritual sons and daughters, those that we leave behind. Now, Revelation chapter 5 is fascinating. God's on his throne. We've seen that in chapter 4. And he's holding the scroll in his hand, which represents the future of mankind. We know that because in chapter 6, as the scroll begins to be opened, so the destiny of mankind is played out. John hears a voice in heaven saying, who is going to be worthy to open the scroll, take charge of the future? Nobody's found. And so John begins to weep. At that point, one of the elders on those thrones, they nudges him and said, don't worry, the lion of the tribe of Judah is here. And, and so we introduced to Jesus as a lion. Remember, this is picture language. It's not that he's got a mane. It's picture language. He's conquered death. He's, he's victorious. He presides over the cosmos. So John, you can almost see him blinking, looking for the Lion of Judah. But then he says, verse 6, I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne. <laughs> and this lamb had seven horns and, and eyes. And, and so the eyes, remember, it's picture language. Are, it says here, it describes the Holy Spirit. So the lamb filled with the Spirit and horns always represent strength. Powerful strength. But he's a lamb. Why a lamb? Well, lambs are the most spoken about animal in the whole Bible. You know that? You know, more than 200 times in the Old Testament. And almost every time the lamb is killed. You see, you see a lamb, I mean, we love lambs. Uh, they, they, they represent humans. They stupid. <laughs> I was speaking to a sheep farmer the other day. He said, you know, it's not a compliment when God called us his sheep. But, but they were, they sacrificed. And so you remember when John saw Jesus coming, he said, behold, the lamb of God, who comes to take away the sin of the world. Every time you see a lamb in the Old Testament, it's speaking about Jesus, Jesus being sacrificed for mankind. And anyway, so this picture of a lion and a lamb, Jesus is so infinite. He's so magnificent. He's so beautiful. And John's reaching, he's reaching for him pictures to describe his strength and the atonement that he brought this, this victory on the cross. He's using this imagery for us to understand this. You see, uh, I saw the lamb standing as though it had been slain in the center. And, and then he says, he came and he took the scroll. And everybody who sat on the throne began to worship. And then he turns and he sees thousands upon ten thousands of angels worshiping. And then every creature on earth and in heaven begins to worship. And the chapter ends by, of this massive cacophony, cacophony of worship, it's the angels say, Amen. So, so why are they celebrating? Well, they're celebrating a victory. It was a lion-lamb victory. It was a, a victory because he died and, and then he rose from the dead. There's this victory. I, let me give you an illustration of a, of a bee. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The, the Bible says. So the devil stung his sting into Jesus on the cross. And he killed Jesus on the cross. But in that act on the cross, the devil himself received a mortal wound. And he is now in the throes of death. He killed Jesus. 
is in the throes of death. God exerted his mighty power in Jesus, raised him from the dead. And at the end of this book, we're going to see the devil is thrown into a lake of fire. And he's going to be swallowed up. He's going to be swallowed up in the final judgment. So he's defeated on the cross, swallowed up in the final judgment. He's defeated by the act of the lamb. And he's thrown away by the power of the lion. What an incredible chapter.